Welcome back to Tour of Eorzea. I'm your host Jay and this is the show where I'm intending to go through almost all of the multiplayer duties in Final Fantasy XIV and give my thoughts about how they function in regards to what they introduce to the player as well as just my general thoughts on how each one handles the mechanics it uses throughout them. This is the third episode of the series so I recommend going back and checking out the ones before this to get a general idea of some terms and mechanics the game has already introduced. Otherwise today we're talking about Copper Bell Mines, the final introduction dungeon of the game. Right after you finish with the Deepcroft, you head over to Uldah where you're hired to get a mine operating again because the world was hurting for resources in the wake of the Calamity five years ago. Unfortunately, in trying to dig deeper, they accidentally unleashed creatures that were used as workers thousands of years ago, and they are pretty pissed at being locked down in the mines for that long. Yeah, I kind of don't really like the reasoning behind us being here. Like, these creatures were enslaved and forced to mine, then sealed in the earth once they stopped being useful. They're not even, like, trying to take revenge on the world or anything, they just want to be left alone and not have to work in these mines anymore. So we show up and kill them. This part of the main questline feels kind of uncomfortable to me, and I'm really glad that I also have some stuff we have to deal with in the old uh, portions of later quests that we don't normally go around doing stuff like this. And after, you know, all of ARR, including the patches, is done. This kind of thing, as far as I'm aware at least, just kind of stops existing. Moving on to the actual gameplay of the dungeon, it's another pretty straightforward one. There's a few side rooms you can go into and an area that can be a little easy to get lost in, but otherwise you're just going through and collecting bits of fire sand to blast open tunnels to get further into the mines or picking up keys to unlock doors. I'm realizing at this point that this is pretty much the standard set for most of the dungeons in this game, outside of how the game, you know, actually looks aesthetically for each dungeon, so I probably won't be commenting on it anymore because I realize it's just kind of repetitive to go over the same thing repeatedly like this, when it's just kind of, you know, the core loop. I did think it was kind of cute having it formatted as a blasting cap and dynamite though for getting into each room. Really adds to the mine aesthetic of the dungeon in a neat way instead of just being a ton of locked gates or something. Those are still here but they're far less and it's a lot more interesting how it does it in my opinion. Outside of that there's some pretty decently large mob pools you can do. Things can move at a pretty brisk pace if your tank can manage and it keeps up the large enemy pack adjustments you should be used to by now after Satasha and Copper Bell. Pretty decent base dungeon experience but overall I think the boss fights are really what makes this early dungeon excel. Similar to Tamterra Deepcroft, the bosses in this dungeon all focus on teaching around one core theme to the player. However, unlike the Deepcroft, each of these bosses are unique and convey mostly different aspects of the same information. The main thing these bosses cover are multiple AoEs and tank busters. For those of you who don't know, a tank buster is the big red thing surrounding me here that signals the tank is about to get absolutely slammed. Generally in higher level content, this is where if you're the tank, you pop a mitigation, and if you're a healer that has shields or anything, you throw that on the tank to keep them alive. This is the first dungeon these appear in, and every boss you encounter has one, basically to just introduce you to the idea that from here on out, this is a thing you can run into. But that's less of the focus than how this dungeon tries to teach you about multiple AoEs. The first boss of the dungeon we have is Kodos. He's the first time in the game you'll ever have to deal with staggered AoEs. Basically, as you can see here, he's creating three AoEs in a staggered manner, and then each one is going off in the order they were placed down. This dungeon left a little area for us to stand in, safe from all of them, but later on with this mechanic, you need to stand on an AoE that spawned later, and then move to the area that opens up after the first one or first few go off. It's a solid introduction to the mechanic, and I think it's good that it's introduced so soon in the game's content run. He also has a standard cone AoE on top of this, but that one is pretty standard all things considered. Next up we have Icarus Iyer, who introduces two different AoE related mechanics. First up, it fires off little orbs of itself directly below where one player is and makes them change position in order to not get hit. This is an interesting mechanic in my opinion because it's not really something you notice in later content since you're generally worried about much tougher things, but this sort of quick single target AoE does force players who aren't usually the target to adjust and reposition while trying to keep the attacks going, since this sort of thing usually happens on whoever doesn't have aggro, which you can see here by me having this boss's attention and the healer getting targeted anyway. Next up, Iyer does this neat thing where it shoots off parts of itself that land around the arena and make a ton of overlapping AoEs all at once. In my opinion, I liked how this directly follows Kodos' example of them. You have it shown to the player with the stagger introduced that to them, and then immediately followed up with they can also go all at once if they drop all at once, so be careful. I think it's a pretty well done follow up to that mechanic. Finally, we have Gygus the Great. Story implications aside, his fight is really cool for how this dungeon has been structured in my opinion. First he introduces the final early game AoE type, and that's the Donut AoE, where he starts charging up and the only safe space in the arena is right next to him. Following this, his other AoE mechanic is charging up an attack around himself, followed by throwing out five others randomly at the same time. In my opinion, this is a good culmination of what the dungeon has taught the player up to this point, since it combines the two major AoE mechanics the last two bosses introduced and the one in a really seamless way. Overall, I think this dungeon did a really good job of building up its bosses and their mechanics for new players. Part of me kind of wishes this came before Tamterra due to these bosses since they feel like a nice follow-up to what Satasha had going on in regards to teaching the player things, but at the same time, if it was before Tamterra, that would probably feel even more out of place than it did already, since, you know, that dungeon was kind of just 
a weird one, in my opinion. I think Copper Bolt Mines is generally pretty good for an early game dungeon. It's not super complex, but as another step into introducing the players to the game, to me it teaches a lesson it wants to pretty expertly. This is the last of the first round of dungeons you get at the beginning of the game, and I think this was a good end cap for those. Definitely a step in the right direction after Tamtara that actually feels like a solid learning dungeon for new players. Next up we have Baby's First Trial in the form of the Bowl of Embers, which should be interesting to try and figure out how I'm going to work into this format, but hey, we'll see how it goes when we get there next week. And with that, we finished Copper Bell Mines. Comment down below what you thought, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see me make more of these. Also make sure you check out these other videos that should be up on the screen right now that my friends and I have been working on. I personally think they're pretty great, but you know, I am a little biased on that. But really though, they are pretty great. We also try to stream a couple times a week over at Twitch, so be sure to check us out there as well. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I've been Jay, and I'll see you next time for another tour of Eorzea.